So what to do when the septic tank alarm goes off? So this won't be applicable to, to everyone, but uh, most engineered septic systems are going to have a uh, pump component to the system. And just uh, the real basic view of it, you've got a house, drains into a septic tank, septic tank drains into a pump chamber, there's a pump in the pump chamber that pumps up to the drain field. There's, there's several reasons or variables why it would need to be pumped up, um, but to keep it simple, whatever the reason is, the septic tanks ended up having to be lower in the ground than the drain field. So it couldn't gravity flow from the septic tank to the drain field. It had to be pumped up to get into the drain field. So you come home or um, you wake up in the middle of the night to an alarm going off. It should, uh, the, the, you should have an alarm box. Um, typically it'll either be found on the outside of your house near the septic uh, tank and pump chamber uh, or it could be located in the garage or in the basement. Um, when it's inside it's usually going to be located near the uh, breaker box uh, in your house. There's several variations to it but um, you basically you're going to have a red light on there um, and so if that red light comes on that's the alarm going off it should also have a buzzer so you can hear a Meh. you know it's it's going to tell you that there's an issue what does that mean um, the way that the pump chamber is set up there's going to be float switches um, so they're basically little balls that are uh, attached in some way inside the pump chamber you've got the pump you're going to have a float switch here that tells the pump to turn on or on or off depending on the, the water level in that in the pump chamber and above that on off float switch you're going to have another float switch that's connected to that alarm box and so if for, for any number of reasons the pump doesn't turn on and that water continues to raise in the pump chamber up to that alarm float switch it's going to turn that alarm float switch to the on position it's going to trigger that alarm to go off and so what that means to you in the house is really slow down almost stop your water use um, your system should be designed that there is some capacity left, but it's usually going to be oh, it's somewhere in the two to six hundred gallon range. Um, once you use that, you're either going to be running uh, water out onto the ground in your yard, or it's going to start backing up in the house. Um, so the alarm goes off, stop the water. Um, the first thing that you want to check is go to your uh, uh, breaker panel and check and make sure you don't have a either a switch turned off for or, you know breaker turned off that's going to the the pump or that it's tripped and it should be labeled it'll typically be labeled septic pump um, a lot of the times you might see somebody label uh, something as pump um, a lot of times that'll be your well pump uh, if it just says pump it, it's not you know don't don't take it for gospel but that's usually usually what you'll see if you if you see that it's a double breaker so it's a two two uh, 220 volt volt breaker that's usually unless it's a rare situation that's usually going to be your your well pump not your septic pump so if you're looking at it, you've got two things labeled pump, and one of them is a double breaker, one of them is a single. Uh, the single is usually going to be your, um, your septic pump. So what's this going to tell you? Well, first of all, if, it, if it's completely off, kick it on, wait a little while and see if that alarm goes off. If that's the case, um, it's possible someone made a mistake or accidentally turned that breaker off and so there was no power going to the pump and so it didn't turn on so the alarm kicked on and alerted you you turned it on now it has power now it's back to working order you fix the problem 
Uh, that's rare, but it it's it's happened. I um, it always makes me think of uh, a time that we, we got a call. Uh, the customer said that the alarm's going off. And I said, okay, when we come out, um, most pump chambers have a riser, which is a lid that you know brings the brings the lid up to the surface, so you can have easy access for this situation. Not this time; it was buried, you know, so it was like two feet down. Dug all the way down. Um, I pulled the lid. You know, the water was right up to the top. Okay, I look over. There's a switch. I turned that switch on. The water started going down in the tank. Every once in a while, you'll see where somebody installed a an on-off switch out by, somewhere by the tank. I've seen them installed on the side of the house as well. Um, it's out of the ordinary, but um, but I've seen it. And she turn it on. Problems fixed. So every once in a while you get lucky at something simple like that. More than likely you, you, you're going to either find that the switch is on or you're going to find that it's the, the, breaker, uh, the breaker is on or you're going to see that the breaker is tripped. Um, you always give it a try and reset the breaker, turn it on. Um, if it immediately trips again, uh, that's usually a sign that the, uh, the pump itself has failed and is going to need replacement. If that breaker is still on and it never tripped, uh, it still could be a failed pump, but the, that leaves open the possibility that it's just a float switch, that on-off float switch. So you remember when the, the water raises in the pump chamber, there's a first float switch that tells it to turn on, and then it pumps down and tells it to turn off. That, that switch itself can go bad and if that's the case it might flip up like normal uh, but it doesn't tell you know it doesn't, doesn't complete the circuit doesn't bring allow the power to get to the pump and it the water keeps raising the alarm goes off so it's possible that it's just the, the float switch uh, we'll do some some more deeper troubleshooting on uh, uh, when the septic alarm is going off in a future episode. Um, but anybody, no matter what type of engineered system you have or what type of pump system you have, that's always going to be the first thing that you want to check are those, those breakers. You may have a control panel for your system. There may be some breakers in there as well. Um, you can check for the same uh, scenario in there uh, and, and see if that, if that helps you. If you go through all those steps and you still got the alarm going off, um, that's the point where you want to go ahead and call up your septic contractor, let them know you got got an alarm going off. You know what you'll want to let them know is how much water have you used since that alarm started going off. Um, that'll give us an idea for how much of an emergency situation it is. Um, if the alarm just started going off, you haven't used much water, we can usually assume that you're going to at least have several hundred gallons of capacity before it's a, um, an issue with uh, backing up in the house. If, if you're like, oh, no, we just did a bunch of laundry and we, the alarm started going off, so we did a bunch of stuff just to try and get by. Well, that, we know it's, that tank's probably going to be filled right up we're going to tell you don't use any water. We need to get out there as soon as, as possible to um, get it diagnosed. So, but at that point, you'll want to have a contractor come out, take a look, and uh, go through some some more troubleshooting to pinpoint whether it's uh, the, the pump has failed, the uh, float switch is the problem. Uh, sometimes you get into issues in a control panel itself that, that controls the pump. So 